A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Whenever men gathered around the campfire in the early days of the western United States, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains. And those stories have come down to us through the generations. In a country where only the brave could survive, the masked man's courage was never matched. He dedicated his life to the cause of justice. It was through his efforts that the honest settlers in the range country found peace and security. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's going to be trouble in Logan Mill. We've got to hurry. hi Silver. Hooray! Drawn to the country around Logansville by its prosperity, outlaws became bolder with each raid until finally law enforcement broke down altogether and the criminals no longer bothered to hide their identity. Right around the country like they owned it. Can't nothing be done. Cattle stole, ranches raided, stages held up, and the law working right along with the crooks. By heavens, somebody's got to do something or the honest folks will have to move out. Then suddenly one morning without warning, the townspeople of Loganville were astonished to see a notice nailed to the wall of the cafe. Vigilantes organized. They've given notice to the crooks to move out. Who nailed that notice up? Wonder what'll happen now. Many things happened, and they happened with speed and precision. A small, self-appointed band of hooded men, their identities known only to themselves, made spectacular and mysterious raids wherever known criminals were to be found. Giving way to the threat of sudden death, the outlaws at first reluctantly and then swiftly with the desperation of terror, packed bag and baggage and departed for safer districts. The vigilantes is the best thing ever happened to these parts. Look how the crooks are clear now. I don't care who the vigilantes are. They're all right. Hooray for the vigilantes! Hooray for the vigilantes! But the small group of men who had banded themselves together, elated by success and confident of their power, found themselves tempted to take advantage of the organization they had created. The cunning brain of Mark Delaney, their leader, saw fresh possibilities, and his persuasive tongue convinced his followers they should accept his plan. We see them now at night. Their heads and shoulders concealed with white hoods gathered at the secret meeting place outside town. Mark, are you sure we can get away with this? And why not? Folks around here figure everything we do is just about right, don't they? Yeah, but... So what I... if the fellas we tell to leave the country start telling their side of it? Let him. Who's to believe him? We'll do like we always done. After we've given them notice, we'll nail the paper to the cafe saying why. If we accuse the fellow of rustling, who's going to believe him again us? I reckon you're right, Mark. You know blame well I am, Nate. Who's the first fellow we're calling on? Jim Dwyer. Him? But everybody figures he's on us. Uh-huh, and that's just why I chose him. If we can get away with our scheme on him, then we can work it on anybody. Well, Give him 24 right. hours notice, huh? <laughs> right. And with that short a time to clear out, he'll sell his place plenty cheap. And we'll buy. Of course. When I first thought of organizing vigilantes, I decided it was the fellows with cash and land I wanted my side. You fellas had the most cash, so I chose you. <laughs> and now, before we're through, we'll have even more. Good enough. When do we ride? Right now. Everybody got their hoods on? Yeah, we're all ready. And let's give Jim Dwyer his marching orders. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. But I ain't a 
nothing. Honest, I ain't. I've always lived honest, fellas. You can't and do this. Why are the vigilantes of Metton decided they don't want your kind in this part of the country? But I tell You're you. You're a I... rustler. You've made your cash stealing other folks' cows. And we're hereby giving you notice that. Wait, listen. That I... you're to clear out inside of 24 hours. No, you can't do it. My ranch, my home. I'm not a rustler, I tell you. And if you don't clear out in the time just stated, you'll be hung from the nearest tree. Ain't that the verdict, men? That's it. There's a mistake. Somebody's lied about me. Listen, you gotta believe me. What you said ain't so. I'll prove it. I'll do anything. Jim to... Dwyer, you'll leave within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. A notice was mailed to the cafe the next morning, stating why Jim Dwyer had been told to leave. The people of the district were stunned, but they accepted the vigilante's ultimatum and refused to believe Jim's claims of innocence. The rancher was forced to sell his property at a ruinous price. Their scheme successful, the vigilantes continued. A half a dozen more prosperous ranchers were added to the list of victims. And then one day, the lone ranger and his faithful Indian companion Tonto, camped not far from Loganville, saw a horseman riding furiously down the trail. Look at that man spur his horse, Tonto. Uh. Him ride heap fast. He's coming from Loganville. Huh? Well, I wonder what his hurry is. No one's behind him. Him all alone. There's no excuse for driving his horse that way. Unless he's carrying an important message or something of the sort. Wait. Come to know him. You do? Huh? Him rancher. Him named Dave Hanford. Dave Hanford? Huh? I've heard of him. Here, Silver. You ride. Dave will kill his horse if he continues like that. Uh. He's got a message that has to be delivered in a hurry. Perhaps I can help him and save his mount. There him come. Yep. Go on, Silver. Come on, boy. He can't run his horse like that. We'll stop him, Silver. Dave! Dave, rein up! Get away from me. I'm not an outlaw, Dave. Come on, Silver. I'm not going to let you drive that horse until you kill it. Pull up! I warn you, you're... There! Get on my hand. You're not hurt. Stop your horse. I won't let you. Get up there. Get along. And I'll stop it for you. Let go of that bridle. It wouldn't stop when I told you. Oh, Silver, hold it back. Oh, old fella. Oh, boy. Last year, what'd you stop me for? even town like you told me, ain't I? My 24 hours ain't up yet. What are you talking about? You dirty crooks. You're getting worse all the time. I suppose you ain't satisfied no more with just stealing ranches. You gotta shut our mouths, too. Look here. Do you think I planned to shoot you? Then if you didn't, why just... I stopped you to save your horse. If I'd wanted to shoot you, I'd have done it when I knocked the gun from your hand. But I don't say... Who did you think I was? That mask. The vigilantes. Did the vigilantes wear masks like mine? Well, uh, maybe I was wrong. I don't know. My camp is just over there. Come along. You said some things I'd like to ask you about. But if I don't clear out... You've been threatened? I was given 24 hours to disappear or get killed. You have my word nothing will happen, Dave. Well, I... You'll either come willingly or I'll make you. Uh, I guess maybe it'll be all right. Get up. Get come up on, Dave. How come you know my name, stranger? I heard it before, Dave, and Tonto recognized you. Tonto? That Indian you see over there, he's my friend. Oh. From the things I'd heard about you, Dave, I had the impression you were honest. I ain't never done a crooked thing in my whole life. But if the vigilantes warned you vigilantes? to leave... Vigilantes? Crooks would be a better name for them. Yes? Stealing ranches. Getting rich by giving honest men like us orders to leave. Buying us out cheap or just taking over without paying nothing at all. That sounds as though you know who they are. No, of course I do. But isn't it a secret organization? It's secret to everybody but the fellas they rob. When fellas wearing hoods call on you at night and tell you to leave the country. And then the next day, fellas that have been getting rich, buying from armies like me, come around and offer you as little as they can for your place. And it don't take long to figure things out. I see. Here we are, Dave. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is Tonto. Howdy. Oh. Tonto, Dave's been telling me some interesting things. And, Dave, there's more questions I'd like to ask you. I'll go right ahead. Can't hurt none, I reckon. If what you've told me is true, if you know these men, why can't you state the facts and accuse them? That just shows how much you know about it. Yes? In the first place, a while back when this country needed vigilantes, these fellows did some good work. All the folks swear by them, even if they don't know who they are. And they wouldn't believe a word again them. Oh. And in the second place, they're rich. And it don't pay to argue with men that's got the power they got. Uh -huh. And in the third place, anybody talking out of turn wouldn't be likely to live long. Who are the men you suspect? You ain't just trying to trick me, are you, stranger? If you'll trust me, perhaps I'll be able to help you. Now, there's something about your style. I thunder I will trust you. Good. I'll take my oath. One of them's Mark Delaney. The fellow that gave me $500 this morning for a ranch worth 5000 Mark Delaney. And Walt Berry and Nate Carlson and George Simons and... Well, there must be about a half a dozen of them all told. They've driven other men like you away? Seven or eight I know of. 
Dave, I'm going to investigate your story. Yeah? If you're right, I'm going to find a way to do something about it. Well, if there was such a way, somebody would have thought of it a long time ago. Well, you'll see. But if those men are guilty and I do find a way to bring them to justice, I want you to promise me something. Huh? Promise what? That instead of leaving, you'll stay with Tonto and me until this is cleared up. Well... A man only deserves what he fights for. Gosh, an hour ago, I thought I was done for. Yes? But now, by heavens, I will fight. Here, Silver. Are you leaving? Yes. I don't know how long I'll be gone, but stay here with Tonto until I get back. Just as you say, mister. And Tonto, the two of you stay out of sight. We do that. Come on, Silver. Several days went by, and then late one night, a group of hooded men made ready to leave Larry Forbes' ranch house. You heard what we said, Larry. 24 hours. Will you run? And not a minute more. Come on, fellas. To your saddles. Back to town? Right. Keep your hoods on until we're away from here. All set, men. Then come on. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Larry's place is going to make a nice piece of property to get a hold of, Mark. <laughs> it ought to just round out our holdings the way we want. And not a blame person suspicion in us, except the fellas we chased away, and they don't come. Well, we've done right well. We have that. But I'm getting a little leery of this. We go too far, and folks will start asking questions. Oh, now, Walter... We ain't going no farther. Huh? You mean... Just uh... what I said. I thought out this scheme, and it's worked fine. But a scheme that's good for a while ain't always good when you use it too long. That's just what I was going to say. You're loco, the both of you. You're making money at something that just ain't sense to give it up. No? Why, there's Phil Potter's place we could get for ourselves. And, and maybe doesn't... ropes to be hung by. Now, wait. You wait. Nate, I've got things figured out. It ain't being crooked that gets a man in trouble. It's being crooked at the wrong times and in the wrong places. That's real sense. We picked the right time for what we've been doing. We started in after we drove the outlaws away, and the folks around here was convinced we couldn't do nothing wrong. But I don't... But from now on, we... Hold on. Hold that. What's the matter, Wolf? I was sure I heard something just then. Heard something? Don't know just what. Might have been a horse went in or something. I don't know. <laughs> Walt, no wonder you want to back up. You're getting as nervous as a scared kid. Oh, well, we're starting... Oh, quit jumping every time you hear a sound. You can take your hoods off now, fellas. Get up there. Come on, get, get up. up. Get up there. What was you saying, Mark? What I started to say was that from now on, we should stick to honest business. Each one of us has got all the land and cash and cows he needs. We've run out the string and it's time to quit. The fellow that's greedy's a fool. Nate, you know Mark's right, and you might as well admit it. Ain't no use holding out if you're all akin me. That's better, Nate. Quitting now, nobody can ever get anything on us. All we have to do is enjoy what we've got, and that's a plenty. We'll burn our hoods and forget all about being vigilantes. Right, and then what? Flash it, I know blame well. I heard something that time. And what if you did? Couldn't be anything but a cow puncher heading for town. <laughs> and who's to bother the vigilantes? Tonight, Dave, was their last raid. Of all the rotten luck. Yes. There goes our last chance of trapping them critters. How are you going to prove anything on them when they ain't doing nothing crooked? There might be a way. Huh? Dave, how many of the vigilantes' victims do you know? Why, most all of them. Do you know where they've gone to? Well, I heard Jim Dwyer's over Ponca City Way. Yes? And Carl Engel, let me see. Seems as if somebody told me he was seen working for the Box M outfit. And the others? Now, give me a minute to think, and I reckon I could remember where most of them have gone. Good. Dave, each one of those men must have had at least one friend among the ranchers who believed in his innocence. Sure, as likely as not. But what good's the opinion of one man when all the rest are against you? In this case, it might be a lot of good. Well, I don't say it. The vigilantes have said they'll not ride again. Yes, yeah, but so they you... will, Dave, and soon. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger told Dave Hanford and Tonto that although the vigilantes planned to retire, they would be forced to ride again in spite of their resolution. He explained the plan he had in mind and then gave his final instructions. We made out a list of the men the vigilantes have driven away. Uh Uh-huh. Me, got list. Each one of us will call on a third of those men and explain the plan. I'll talk to them, fellas, and by thunder, they'll listen. Make them agree to help. Do anything but get their cooperation. We do that. And then, when you've seen the men we want, return here. This will be our meeting place. Fine. Now there's no time to waste. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. I'll get my horse. We should all be back here within a week. And then we'll go into action. Come on, Silver. Get over, Scout. Jim! Jim Dwyer! Dave Hanford! Oh, oh there. Oh, I... Oh. Jim, listen to me. But where'd you come from, Dave? All the way from Loganville, just to see you. And if you don't do like I say, I'll have your hide put. Who's there? You open door. Just a second. Well, a, a redskin. He won't talk to you. You listen. Come on, silver old fellow. We called on two of the men we wanted to see. Now to get the last, then back to camp. Hi, oh, silver. How are you? More than a week passed, and then one day Nate Carlson received some startling information. He went directly to Mark Delaney's home. Double crossing skunk, I'll show him. Mark, open up this door and open it, Pronto. I know you're in there. Open up. What in place is the matter with you? Get inside. Now look here. No. You didn't want to pull no more, Ray. You knew when you was well off. Sure, you knew all right. So just the minute you get me convinced we ought to stop me, you go behind my back and do some raiding on your own. That's a lie. I suppose you'll say it's a lie. The vigilantes waited the Circle Cross outfit. They what? You heard me. You and the rest of them wasn't only seen. You had the infernal nerve to nail a notice on a cafe wall like we all has done. There's something funny about this. Funny? That ain't the word I got for it. I'd say it's now a just double... wait a minute. That's your trouble, Nate. Flying off the handle when there ain't no cause. You? If the Circle Cross was raided, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Now take my oath, none of the other fellas did either. The Raiders was wearing hoods. They was. They told their hands it was vigilantes. Well, I'll... Be... And what's more, they told the fellas out there that from now on they was running things the way they wanted to. They said they'd done a lot for this part of the country, getting rid of crooks, and now they was going to get something for themselves. And you was loco enough to think I'd do a fool thing like that? Well... By heavens, after knowing me all these years. What else was I to think? How do you expect me to know what you think when I don't know what to think myself? I don't savvy this. Not do I. But whoever them fellas are pretending to be us... They're riding right for trouble. But in spite of Mark's prediction, the next few weeks saw the hooded band strike again and again without being caught. Where's the vigilantes? We're helping ourselves to these clouds. Anybody don't like it can start dodging lead. The townspeople who had never inquired into the vigilante's identity as long as the hooded band did the work the law had failed to do began first to harbor misgivings, then to give voice to their indignation. Just because they run the outlaws off, they think they got a right to turn crooked. They stole all of our tanks. And helped themselves to circle cross cattle. Shut up, Zeke's place. They gotta be stopped. As the raids continued, the townspeople demanded the vigilantes be halted. The result was a meeting held in the cafe we and called to order by old Zeke Eyes. Quiet down, folks. Quiet down. Now then, I reckon everybody knows the business before this meeting. To catch them dirty crooks. Yeah, catch them. Catch them. Wait, catch you. Like I was saying, we all know why we come here tonight. There's been things happening around these parts. 
It can't be put up with no more. All of you savvy what I mean. It's the raiding and robbing and thieving the village giants have done. It can't go on no more. Something's got to be done. They run wild. That's just it. There was a time when we was mighty glad to see them fellas operating. They done a heap of good before they got too big for the boots and went hog crazy. So, seeing as how we're all agreed they've got to be caught, I'd like to hear a few suggestions. There's only one thing we can do, Zeke. Yeah? That's for all of us that can handle shooting irons to keep armed every minute of the day and night. Then just as soon as somebody reports seeing them crooks, we'll try to get there before they get away. Well, that's one idea. But it ain't a good one. No? No, for all we know, some of the vigilantes are right here at this meeting. They're Loganville folks just like the rest of us. They make a raid and all they got to do is to hide their hoods and pretend they were there looking for the crooks instead of being them. That's true, sure enough. And we can make any streak of plans for the same reason. We'd never know who to tell the secrets to or to keep them from. Well, what's your scheme? Well, somehow we got to catch them and wear in the hoods. Yeah. And with evidence on them, we can you to get them. But how's that to be done? You got me, Zeke. But if anybody thinks there's another way, he's local. That's right. <laughs> Action. They want the vigilantes punished. And given half a chance, they'll see that they are punished. Them plenty mad. I just saw Walt Barry slip from the cafe and head for Mark Delaney's house. Uh, you know exactly what you're to do, don't you, Tata? Me not forget. The men are waiting. We'll only need 15 minutes. You go now? Yes, Tata. Then in 15 minutes, follow our plan. Come on, Silver. In the meantime, one by one, the vigilantes arrived at Mark Delaney's home to discuss the situation. We're all here, ain't we? Yeah. George just came in and he was the last one we was waiting for. And we've got to decide is this. Are the things that have been happening dangerous to us? If they are, what are we going to do about it? Seems to me, Mark, these fellas posing as us are doing us a favor. Yeah? They're bound to be caught sooner or later, don't you see? And then when they are, there won't be nobody can blame us for anything. That sounds reasonable. The rest of you think the same? And you figure we ought to just let them go along with enough rope to hang themselves? Yeah. Shucks, me and Walt don't often agree on any one thing, but this time I'd say... Hey, I'd say... Hey, oh, oh, that's man! And there's Dave Hanford! Hold on, Dave Hanford. The fellow you skunks thought you ran out of the country. Well, me, that was some more folks you robbed. Here's Carl and Jim. Well, what's and... You'll soon learn what this is about, Mark. The hoods, men. Here they are. Hey, what are you doing? You're going to wear these hoods. No, wait a you minute. You can't do that. Can't... Stand back! Hey, do Stand it! still. All of you are covered. But you can't do Mark, you... these are the men you and your friends cheated. You used your position to steal everything they owned. Now you're going to get a taste of your own medicine. You, you'll pay for this. Put the hoods on them. No, oh, it's a downright pleasure. You just watch me. We'll fix it, skunk. What's this for? It's an old barn just outside of town, Mark. Yeah, but I... It's been years since it's been used. It's just the kind of place vigilantes would choose to meet. To, to meet? That's enough for you to know right now. Are they all wearing hoods? Every last one of them. And back to our horses. Hurry! <laughs> Men. Take them inside. I'll open the door. Now, nah, get in there, you skunks. Don't try to hang back. You'll get some lead to speed you up. Listen, we'll give you cash. We'll pay you back what we took. Sure we will. You can have it all back. And more besides. Keep still. Dave and Jim and the rest of us are going outside. You, Mark, will stay in here with your friends. Wait, please. We're going outside, Mark. But we're not going far. The walls of this barn have cracks in them. Cracks wide enough to fire through. And if you try to leave, you'll only get shot. Hey, hurry it up. They're coming from town. The engine's done his part. Remember, we'll be just outside and watching you. Close the door, Dave. Yeah. Mark. Mark, what's going to happen to us? We're done for. But maybe we'll be able to explain. You maybe fool, they... explain. The way the folks in town are feeling. Just one look at these hoods on us and we're done for. Then let's make a break for it. No, that's just what Dave and them want. They'd like to shoot us down. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's them. It's too late now to run if we wanted to. Uh, hey, oh, yeah. Bring the light this way. Is anybody in here? Send where you are. The light. The light's shining on them. Look. Tear them hoods off. Wait, wait. The fellas you want. Leave me be. Don't take that hood away. Well, I'll be Mark Delaney. Mark. Walt. 
Neat. And there's George. Blast it. Listen. This is a frame up. We didn't. Just take a look at these things hidden in the corner. It's all the things the stuff that's been stolen lately. I'll eat my saddle. The hoods and the loot. That's evidence enough. No, you can't blame Shut that. Shut up. You fellas come here to plan another one of your raids, I'll bet. Well, this time you ain't for raiding. You're going to jail. <laughs> Our work is done, men. After what's been discovered in there, I don't think you'll have trouble getting your property back when you return to town to claim it. Shucks, it'll be easy to show how it was done out of it now. And even if we couldn't, we've had the satisfaction of seeing them crooks get what's coming to them. Thanks to you, stranger. There are other people you want to thank more. You mean... I mean the friends who trusted you. The friends who let you pretend to raid their homes and steal their cattle. So the townspeople could be moved to action. We ain't forgetting. Come, Tonto. Uh, but hold on a second. Yep. We may meet again. But we'd like to tell you. Ready, Tonto? Well, you can't be go. ready. Well, wait. Oh, Silver, you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.